the proposal or that was approved was to increase the uh, sulfur dioxide emissions at the, at the, the new smelter uh, would now have a, a higher production level and, and would require a permit to increase its sulfur dioxide emissions from a maximum of 27 tons per day to 42 tons per day. That's a 56% increase. Sul sulfur dioxide is a precursor to particulate matter. Uh, it uh, basically is an air pollutant. Uh, it also is, uh, uh, if it doesn't pollute the air, it uh, also can turn into acid rain. Uh, and, and so I'm, I was concerned that uh, there was not necessarily enough time for people in the community to actually gauge the impact of this increase on their health and their environment. One of the reasons we moved back to Terrace was I was attracted to the area because of the air quality. And I would come here and having grown up in the summer and I like to fish, and so I would come here in the summer holidays, my wife and I would just relax. We had some family and friends in the area, and uh, we would fish for a couple weeks. And I noticed that I did better with the air in the terrace area than I did in Prince George. I am concerned about uh, the proposed SO2 emissions because I myself suffer from asthma, and um, it took me 12 years. I lived in the Lower Mainland for a while. It took me 12 years to sort of get my asthma under control and um, I have been able to living in Kitimat. I had to move from Vancouver. It just was not, um, the pollution was not conducive to my breathing ability and it was making my life, I was suffering. So I came here. I have asthma and I've had it for a number of years. And so I'm on puffers and um, I'm on them on a daily basis. I carry them around. And so if I'm in an area that has poor air, I tend to notice it right away. And so for me as a grower to work outside when the air is poor, it can affect me. And if it's really bad, I'll have to go inside. When I learned about the increased sulfur dioxide that Rio Tinto wanted to do, and there wasn't much of a hullabaloo in the community about it, I, I found that really wrong. I was just shocked actually because of the experiences as a child or and as a student and and knowing that government had worked really hard in the 70s to decrease sulfur dioxide because they knew it was harming the the lake system and acidifying soil and it, and and talk about asthma but i don't think the health impacts were so much discussed then but since then, um, a lot more is known about your health, um, your mental health, your physical health, the impacts of pollution. So I just found it uh, quite peculiar that um, a permit would go for forward, um, a permit allowing such an increase of sulfur dioxide. Uh, you, can, you cannot say that there's a safe expo exposure to a poison. It's um, you, what you have to decide is the amount of damage that you're willing to tolerate. And these days, now that we have this technology, this best available technology, these scrubbers, uh, and, and that we know what, what these substances do to people, uh, we, we have uh, the basis uh, to act and to uh, make sure that we minimize the amount of damage that there is. The technology is there, it is affordable, it's not a large proportion of the total cost of the project. I mean, $200 million, we're talking about a $3.5 billion project. So it's a, it's a small percentage of the total. So the, the Northern Health Authority was consulted, which is a part of the, the process. And, and they advised that the Rio Tinto Alcan should install scrubbers, um, that not rather than increase their, their emission levels. It's, it's uh, evident that the airshed here is directly affected by what goes on in Kitimat. And so I'm concerned that uh, the prevailing winds come this way and they're going to bring uh, SO2 into our valley here. The simple solution it, it's very basic, is for the government to rescind its permit. The sustainable thing to do, and the thing to do that would generate good rapport with the community, 
would be to install the scrubbers. I know it's not cheap, but given the cost of this project, given the potential cost to human health, given the cost potentially to the environment, I think it's, it's the obvious thing to do. You Tinto Alcan did bring in a, a scrubber consultant for a community meeting in 2013, uh, in the spring of 2013, and the consultant said that uh, uh, he would see seawater scrubbers uh, are the most likely scrubbers for the, the Rio Tinto Alcan plant uh, that he thought at the time, and uh, and that's because. Um, those plants that are near the water use them because they're the most cost effective and also environmentally friendly. The water is, uh, has got natural al alkaline or alkalinity in it and you bring that in and it reacts with the sulfur dioxide to form what's called a sulfate which is then released in the, in the ocean. Uh, but the ocean already has uh, so much sulfate that even if you were to burn all of the fossil fuels in the world and scrub them with seawater scrubber, it would make a minute difference to uh, the amount of sulfate in the ocean already. So, so it's considered to be a benign uh, transformation and certainly is better than poisoning the population.